Hello friends, Techman Pad here. Today I'm going to be reviewing this very strange looking thing. I'm going to show you this in a weird way. <gasps> Look at that. Is that really, really thin? It is. And is that just one USB-C cable coming to this really thin device? And is this a full-on monitor? Absolutely, and this is a video by Game with Casper. Go check out his channel. I'm going to be using this in as an example, playing in the background. This is the review of the DeskLab external portable monitor. Let's get started. Yes, my friends, this is an external monitor. It is absolutely thin. Thin. Now this was sent to me a little while ago, actually last year they said they're going to send it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, okay, whatever, I'll have a look and I'll see if it's any good. And obviously you can see it's incredibly thin for a 1080p, 60 frames of course, 60 hertz, so nothing gamery of course. And it's actually plugged straight into one single cable, a Type-C, into a MacBook and it's compatible. <laughs> what? And it's being powered by the MacBook too. And of course, it works absolutely seamlessly. I was surprised how quickly it worked. I plugged it in and it worked straight away. I'm going to try and show you moving images on the side here. As you can see, it's not particularly bright and that seems to be its only flaw that I have found so far. But there are other flaws and those flaws are a bit more problematic with other devices other than a MacBook. Now, this is a MacBook M1. It has an issue where Brave, the Brave browser does crash using a secondary monitor, but I haven't had Chrome crash on the background. So I don't really blame this monitor because it works absolutely fine with my Windows rig and my Windows laptop. I would say it's more of a MacBook problem. If you have a MacBook that's Intel based, I don't imagine you would have this problem. And as you can see, the plug, it can power this whole monitor with one USB-C. That is the benefit of USB-C and I don't understand why more devices do not have USB-C. I'm still shocked sometimes, but I guess they're coming into more popularity now. More and more do have it. So back to the screen. The colors are pretty good. Watching movies on this, just in bed, connected to a laptop, it's much better than holding a laptop. In fact, it's extremely light and I found the colors to be really, really good actually. Like I could not fault them. I probably wouldn't be using them as photo editing for a professional workplace. But if I'm on the road, maybe at an airport and I need a second monitor to work through because my flight is delayed by a couple of hours, I would definitely choose this. It does come with a case that makes it stand. So this is not all you get. There's no built-in stand, but there's a little case, a little leather case that you can flip over and make it stand, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, what about the IO? In fact, it does have a 3.5 millimeter jack. It has a power on button and a volume button for that actual jack. On the other side, we've got two USB-C plugs because you can have a device that doesn't give power in USB-C. And of course, you can put the video through the USB-C. So you can have two, you can power it. And if the device can't power it via one, you can obviously use two, like a USB standard to a USB-C, power with that and so on. This does take very little power, as you can see, one cable. Now with the cable that is included, I would suggest you use it because I just tried a different cable that was used to just charge. It did not work, so be very careful. It seems that USB-C manufacturers are certainly not putting in data transfers between the plugs that they make. Uh, the official Apple one does work, which is fine, but the one included works as well. Otherwise, the other ones that are getting hot and I thought it was gonna burn down. Nonetheless, there is also a micro HDMI or mini HDMI, I think you'd call it, from a big HDMI plug to a small one. Great adapter. This is actually peculiarly expensive, like $30, $40 just to get one of these cables. Um, and that allows you to connect to a Windows machine that doesn't have a USB-C. And at the end of the day, one of the biggest benefits of having this is the ability to carry this wherever you go. So yes, it is light, very thin little bezels over here. But there is a killer feature that I absolutely love, and that is the fact that this is a touchscreen monitor. There is an issue with MacBooks, touchscreen doesn't really work, so there's that. But if you hook it up to a Windows laptop, you get full touchscreen capabilities, and it works flawlessly. It has 10 points of touch, so you've got all 10 fingers on there, and I think as almost using it as a little browser to a laptop that's connected to the side, Imagine using this on a plane where your laptop is, you know, it's too big to fit on the little seat. You just chuck it 
it into the side, plug this in and off you go. You can do all your touch, watch a few movies, hold it up. This is an absolutely fantastic solution to that. You can also connect things like an iPad into here. Not that you would because it's already portable, but if you want to do a larger presentation to somebody, you can. But I would suggest that this is a really cool solution for watching movies on a plane. Especially now, Qantas, for example, is saving money by turning off the entertainment on flights less than five hours. That is pretty crap. Nonetheless, travel is travel, right? Let's keep going. So what's the touch like? Well, 10 points of touch actually provide you some interesting concepts. You can drag things across with two fingers. You can double tap. You can also select two things at once. It works really weirdly in Windows, but I think it's okay. Personally, you probably won't be using more than two or three, especially when you're tracking down from the top. Nonetheless, it's there and it works seamlessly. It feels like an iPad screen and it's really solid. Like the screen itself, it's kind of matte, but it's really solid when you press your fingers down. So don't be afraid that when you push it down, you'll damage the screen. I think it's okay. Obviously, if you take a knife and stab it, it'll break. And if you punch it, of course, there'll be some damage. Nonetheless, just like anything else, the actual quality of the screen depends on how well you take care of it. I have already scratched it lightly, but to be honest, unless I'm looking at it at a really weird angle, I cannot see that scratch. The case itself is fairly well protected, and at the end of the day, you're gonna carry it in. It is thin enough to chuck in your backpack, and the size of it is pretty good. It seems to be just a tad wider than an M1. It's about 16 by 9, 1080p, and 1080p really means that you can drive this monitor from a single cable. There is a 4K variant, which I would not suggest, unfortunately, because it means more power is needed to run it, and at this screen size, 4K is just unnecessary. And I just don't see any benefit, especially higher power draw, more cables required. 1080p, 60 is the perfect size. And coming back to the only flaw I could find with this device, and that's the actual brightness. On a Windows device, I can say it's a little bit brighter, but maybe because it's coming through the HDMI. But I would also like to add that the fact that it's so dim means it isn't using much power. This is on maximum brightness right now, and looking at it straight, more than happy. Hello friends, it's Techman Pat here. Hope you are well. Today I've got something pretty darn exciting for you, especially after the Zen Book event. This is the SUS event where they released their new Zen Book. You do get a couple of TV settings from volume to some sort of HDR, but none of them really made a big difference. The eco setting from vivid to normal did help with the colors to be a bit more poppy, but all the other settings felt like they were just for show, just didn't feel like they did anything. As you can see, going from five brightness to 10 made very little difference on the actual monitor. It's just not very bright. But if you've got an extremely lit room like this with all the lights coming down, I think you'll be a little bit problematic. Nonetheless, in a office or a plane or somewhere else that isn't hugely lit, this monitor or this external monitor will do absolutely well. Before we talk about price, there's a couple of things I'd like to suggest for these guys for this lab to improve in the next version. Make the whole front just glass so I don't have to worry about damaging this because it does feel like it could get scratched easily. That's one tip for you guys. Add a stand on the back. Look at the Microsoft Surface tablet that can literally just have a little pop-out stand. Much better than a flimsy case. The case is a little bit annoying. It adds a little bit of weight and actually thickness to it because it's so beautifully thin that I would love to keep it that way. And finally, the price of this device. Now, there is a sale on right now, and I don't know how long the sale is gonna last, but it's $299, but it was 500. This is a $500 extremely portable monitor. There is a significant cost to it. It is very nice aluminium, it's light, it's got a lot of technology inside, it does the job really well. Yes, it's not that bright. Nonetheless, at $500, it's a little bit expensive. Bringing it down to $300, I have to admit, it's starting to look good. Now, I'm gonna put the links below for you guys to check it out. Let me know what you think. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like this video if you did and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Uh, and let me know below if you'd like me to check out the 4K one because I'm gonna come back to these guys and I'm gonna ask if they wanna send it to me. But I wanna make sure that you guys are keen to see it. Personally, I don't see the benefit of 4K with this size of monitor. 
And if you're a traveler, a traveling creator, I think you'll really love this. That's who it's for. And I think at a price of $300, it'll be absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for DeskLab for sending me this device for review. And thank you very much to you for watching. Make sure you like this video if you did, and I'll catch you all in another one. Bye.